I love this stuffy. It's so cute. And to join it this year, my fiance got me this one for my birthday. That led me to the realization that as an adult, I think that poison types are making a play to become my favorite type. Reflecting a bit more on this, it makes sense because it's a type that's so commonly paired with my favorite type, the bug type. And my second favorite type, especially for starters, the grass type. Venomoth, Trubbish, and Coughing are all Pokemon that I've become fond of since my return to Pokemon in 2013. I'm really excited to give this cute floating meteorite depth charge thing a go in Pokemon Yellow today and see what it's capable of. Uh, when it's not using self-destruct and explosion, that is. After all, these are the rules. I've left a detailed copy of them in the description so you can check them out later. To start the run, I affectionately name my coughing Stinky. I think it's a cute and fitting name. The rival's Eevee moves first and lowers Coughing's defense. Smog misses, Eevee's tackles doing more than expected, and then Smog hits and inflicts poison. I think from here I'll need to get some luck to win. Luckily, I get through it with a combination of Eevee missing tackle and using Tail Whip when it really should have just attacked. Now, here's a fact that I find surprising. Coughing has the fourth highest base stat total when compared with every other first stage Pokemon in Generation 1. It has 295 distributed as 40 HP, 65 attack, 95 defense, 60 special, and 35 speed, giving it around a 7% chance to crit. So essentially, it's a physically defensive Pokemon with decent attack and special. However, it's quite slow, and once again Game Freak gives the defensive Pokemon a low HP stat. Ugh, that's so frustrating. It doesn't have a diverse or large move pool. Sludge, Smokescreen, Toxic, Thunderbolt, Mimic, Fire Blast, Rest, and Substitute are really the only options. Maybe Haze and Bide could be useful, but honestly I doubt it. Obviously, in this challenge, Self-Destruct and Explosion are going to be completely useless and off the table. To start, Coughing has access to Tackle and Smog. Smog gets the same type of attack bonus, making it effectively a 30 power move with a 40% chance to poison. The downside is that it's 70% accurate. Uh, I mean 50% accurate. Unfortunately, the poison type will only do a quarter damage to Brock. I think the early game is going to be really slow as a result. And making it even slower is the fact that Coughing is part of the medium fast experience curve. But there is a silver lining here, and that's that Smog is super effective against the bug type, and the Caterpie line is very plentiful in the early game of Yellow. This speeds up the trainer battles in Viridian Forest and the battles against wild Pokemon. Now, before I get too positive, uh, Coughing has something else working against it, and that's that it doesn't learn a new move until level 32. I have to defeat Brock with Tackle and Smog. I reach Pewter City at level 10, and it just isn't a good idea to waste time and try the gym battle now. Instead, I backtrack through the forest, and I do some training as I go. This gives me access to two additional trainer battles. First, I face this last. She has two Nidorans. She's easy to defeat, and that leaves Coughing at level 11. Now, I take on the optional rival west of Viridian City. Spearos first. I wasn't particularly worried about this fight because of Coughing's defense stat. I'm using Smog first for the chance to poison, and I get it on Spearow. However, it does lower my attack twice before it faints. Eevee's Sand Attack could be really problematic now, so I go for Smog, no poison, Sand Attack, Smog hits again, gets a crit, but it doesn't poison. Oh no, is my lack of accuracy going to be the end of coughing now? But it isn't, and Eevee gets poisoned this time. Now it doesn't matter if I miss, and coughing has got this. While I train, I'll explain how poison works in Generation 1. First of all, all poison moves use the attack stat and deal physical damage. If the status of poison occurs, it deals 1 16th damage every turn. Bad poison, which is caused specifically by the move Toxic, starts by dealing 1 16th, and it doubles on every successive turn. Fun fact, if you switch a Pokemon out that's badly poisoned, and then send it back in, its bad poison turns into regular poison. The reason that this occurs is because of the game's RAM and how it overwrites memory. When your Pokemon isn't in battle, there's no RAM location allocated to store the bad poison status. Now, one more thing quickly before I finish up my training, let's just check out Coughing's back sprite. Honestly, great. This is one of the better Generation 1 back sprites. It actually looks like the Pokemon. Now, let's get back to the playthrough. I'm level 13, and I want to test Coughing against Brock just to see how close this fight is. Smog is only doing a single HP of damage, and Geodude's tackle is doing 3. Using Tackle, I'm doing a bit more, it looks like 2, so that's better. 
One thing that's nice about using Smog here is that if it poisons Brock's Pokemon, he replaces its move with a full heal, and that allows Coughing to prevent damage for one turn. Uh, oh, the glorious retroactive healing items of Generation 1. I think that 2 damage with Tackle is just better right now though. At this level, Coughing doesn't have a chance, and it faints without even bringing the Geodude into red. I'm hopeful here though, because Coughing's defense stat may bring Geodude's damage down to 2 very soon. Training in the forest isn't the worst grind either, especially because Coughing has a lot of PP. It very rarely needs to heal. At level 16, I try again against Brock. Geodude is still dishing out 3 damage, but so is Coughing. This time I make it to Onyx. You'll notice here that I'm using Smog. Onyx has really high defense, so depleting Brock's full heals and poisoning it I think would be really nice. Unfortunately in this case, the combination of Screech and Bind are just too much and Coughing falls again. Maybe at level 18 it will work? Geodude crits turn 1 and it does 4 damage. So at this level, Coughing's only taking 2 damage per regular hit. That makes things much easier. I try to go for smog strategies against Onyx, miss a bunch, it gets bind, and coughing goes down. This is very close. To ensure that I win, I level coughing up to level 19 and then try again. This time I poison Onyx when it uses bide. By the way, when it's accumulating energy, Brock actually won't use full heals until bide finishes. This allows me to get more damage in against it that doesn't actually stack up against the bide counter. After that, it doesn't really seem like this poison strategy is going to work out, so I start using tackle for the extra damage. By doing that, Coughing is finally able to defeat Brock and move on to the rest of the game. So I talked about a silver lining before, and there's another one here. Whenever you have to overlevel for Brock, it makes the next route and Mount Moon much easier for the Pokemon you're using. I grab the rare candy and then face the super nerd. Coughing versus coughing. Mine's better, look at him, he, he just knows it. I grab the dome fossil, take care of Jesse and James, and make my way to Cerulean City. Thinking about the options that I have next, I can either face Misty or the rival on Nugget Bridge. She's probably going to destroy me right now, because Coughing's special isn't great, so I'll face the rival first. Spiro takes three tackles to knock out, and it uses Growl before going down. Sandshrew is next, and in this moment, I had a deep and painful realization. Coughing has nothing that is going to knock this thing out quickly. Sand attack can be so annoying here. I do manage to knock it out, but I miss against Rattata, and it finishes the battle with Hyper Fang. Maybe I'll get luckier in the next fight? Well, I do, because Spiro doesn't use Growl. Now Tackle is doing one quarter to the Sandshrew. Sand attack hits, Tackle still hits, Sandshrew scratches, Coughing aims well again, and again. Sandshrew goes down, and Rattata comes out. I miss once against it, and take some damage as a result. Now I've only got a third health remaining for the Eevee. Tackle hits, Eevee lowers my defense another stage, and that's three stages lower for coughing. Tackle misses, and Eevee uses Growl. I'm really not liking my odds now, but coughing has other ideas. It gets a critical hit and polishes Eevee off. That's such a relief, because I was afraid that I was going to be stuck here for a while because of Sandshrew. Now, I'm starting to notice a trend. I say something nice about coughing, like, oh, I'm really relieved that I didn't get stuck there. And then immediately following that, I have something that's bad to say because uh, things aren't moving fast because I have one mandatory hiker to knock out on the next route. His Geodude is so annoying. It has defense curl and I use smog. I'm trying to poison it and maximize the damage that's done every turn. After that I use tackle, but it's doing like one damage. It's so slow. Uh, at least I uh, have more accuracy in this fight. I was a bit worried that he might beat me here, but slowly and surely coughing pulls into the lead and takes the win. At Bill's house, I question what my next step should be. Do I face Misty or skip her and head to the SSN for more experience? Since it's a first playthrough and my results won't be optimal anyways, I decide to take the riskier choice and face her right away. Coughing poisons Star U turn 1. Looks like that's going to be a 3 hit. Stormy comes out next. Instead of trying to poison it, I go for tackle right away. It does about a sixth. Coughing gets taken under half by Bubble Beam. Crits Starmy to half, but it isn't quite enough. That does seem doable at this level though. Staryu once again is an easy Pokemon to defeat. It like, honestly always is. I think that Misty might have been harder if she only had Starmy on her team. But she has other ideas about how she can be hard. Starmy uses Harden twice and then gets an X Defend. Coughing is doing so little damage now, and that's my sixth reset. I tried one more time because the first fight felt pretty good, but my hopes are crushed here. I'm just going to need to go to the SSN first. 
However, the road to the SSN might not be so easy either, because the rocket right outside of Cerulean City has a drowsy that knows confusion and hypnosis. Both of these are incredibly scary for coughing. However, in this playthrough, I'm lucky and I take the drowsy down in two hits. Another big relief. But there's still one more challenging trainer before the SSN. This junior trainer with three Pidgeys. It's really annoying because all of her team members have sand attack and they're quite fast. Coughing already struggles with accuracy, so I was worried about this fight. While I was playing, I just reflected on how bad it feels to not learn any new moves, even from TM at this point. Like, I know coughing can learn Bide, but uh, I just don't count that as a move. It's, it's like the worst thing. I really don't want to be using it. Lucky for me today, tackle's enough and I knock out all of her Pidgeys. On the SSN, I get the first TM that might be useful for coughing, it's rest. After that, I usually visit the room with Body Slam in it, but coughing doesn't learn it. So yeah, here I'm just sad. I grab the rare candy, heal up, and use an ether to raise Tackle's PP, and then I face Rival 3. Now, I say he's easy all the time, but I'm very careful with my wording there to specify that he's easy when you get access to new moves. Typically, you get Body Slam in here. Shouldn't coughing get body slam? Like, it's a round body? It looks like it would be very good for slamming things. In this fight, Spiro really messes things up. Coughing has an attack and a defense drop going into the battle against Rotata. It lowers my defense again, just barely hangs on with a sliver, but luckily Tail Whip misses. The rival uses a potion on the rat, keeping it alive just long enough to get a quick attack in. Ah! That takes coughing to just above half health. Sandshrew is next. Sand attack. Just great! Coughing gets lucky with a crit and manages to knock it out, but on Eevee, I run out of PP for tackle. It sets up another sand attack. Smog has already terrible accuracy. It misses so much, and uh, yeah, my cute poisonous puffball gets beaten up and faints. Okay, that's annoying. At least I managed to defeat him in the next fight. I dig back to Cerulean and face Misty again for a fourth time. Coughing goes down again, and again, and again. So at this point, I've lost six times against her. I fight the swimmer in her gym, hoping that I'll level up, but uh, yeah, I don't even get the level up. Please, coughing. You can do this. Maybe after knocking the star you out, coughing will level up. Unfortunately, I don't get the level up. Star me gets set up with Harden, and once again, coughing loses. So yeah, this is really not going well. I obviously have to train and Nugget Bridge is the quickest place for me to gain experience. At level 28, I come back and try Misty again. Coughing's doing a lot of damage to Staryu now, but it's not quite enough to knock it out in two hits. Starmie uses Water Gun, that gives me a tackle before its defenses are raised. I get another one, Misty uses an X Defend, and finally Coughing brings Starmie down to red health. This is looking promising. Starmie hardens, Coughing attacks, but it isn't quite enough. And then Starmie gets a crit with Bubble Beam. Come on! Going into this playthrough, I honestly didn't even think about this fight. Like, Misty doesn't have any psychic moves, so I was like, that's probably not going to be a problem. But yeah, at this point, coughing's pretty beat up, and I'm starting to lose faith that this is even possible at level 28. One more attempt, and then I'll go train more. Once again, I bring Starmie down to low health, it uses Bubble Beam, and takes coughing to 7 hit points. Please KO. Coughing uses Tackle, and finally it does it. I've beat Misty. Usually a tough Misty battle, especially when you go to the SSN first, means that Surge is going to be incredibly easy. Raichu gets an X speed, coughing tackles for not very much, okay. Raichu uses Thunderbolt, doing more than half, and then it finishes me next turn. This is very discouraging. At least Surge is very luck based, because he only has one Pokemon, I might be able to do this. I try Smog to poison Raichu, but after three hits I don't get it, and I just use Tackle instead. Raichu uses Mega Punch, crits, but coughing survives at 4 hit points. Tackle takes Raichu into red, and then I pray, please don't attack. Surge uses Growl, and there's no Generation 1 miss here, so coughing's moving on. Now it's time for a recap. To this point in the game, everything has felt awful with coughing. Brock, Rival 2, Rival 3, Misty, Surge. And uh, yeah, the brutality is not going to end. I do very little damage to the Wrapping Lass's first Oddish, and it paralyzes Coughing. This is why I call her the Wrapping Lass, by the way. She sets up Paralysis, and then her Bellsprout moves first and traps you forever. 
you have to wait for her to stop using wrap and select growth instead, or for wrap to miss. So when's this gonna happen? Like, come on, come on. Okay, okay, there it is. And then coughing misses. <sighs> but Bellsprout uses growth again and coughing finishes it. Paralysis prevents some of my turns against the next Oddish and coughing arrives at the final Bellsprout with only 18 hit points. This really isn't looking good. It uses Wrap, takes Coughing to 10 hits, misses, Smog hits for half, Bellsprout misses again, but Smog doesn't do quite enough. Okay, I probably should have been using Tackle here. After all, Bellsprout can't be poisoned by Smog because it's a poison type. It uses Growth, Paralysis prevents my Smog, just great, but the Wrapping Lass fails to Wrap and Coughing actually wins. Right now, I am realizing that I am starting to get surprised when I defeat my opponent. Uh, coughing, you're really cute, but unfortunately you're extremely bad. And uh, what do you expect? The nightmare obviously continues. Just inside the cave is the Pokemaniac who has a Cubone and a Slowpoke. Cubone does one quarter with the ground type move, Bone Club. Oh dear. So if I even get to the Slowpoke, it's gonna knock me out, right? Cubone misses enough times and coughing has decent health remaining. Please, Thunderbolt. I use it, it does so much, and Slowpoke faints. Oh, so uh, that was a lucky crit. However, the next Slowpoke in the tunnel is a higher level, but it also faints to Thunderbolt. Oh, okay, good. I didn't need the crit before. All of this has been so bad that I uh, haven't even been thinking past the next trainer in the game, a and then it sank in. The hiker is coming up. What can Coughing do against him? So let's go through some of the math here. Tackle's going to do half damage to his Pokemon because they're rock types, so that's effectively 17.5 power. Smog could poison, but it's going to be doing a pitiful 7.5 effective power. So Sludge, a poison type attack, is actually going to be doing the most damage against his team. It also additionally has the chance to poison. So to get access to it, I uh, have to fight some extra trainers uh, who don't have rock types. Coughing doesn't reach level 32 in the cave, so I backtrack, heal, and fight a trainer outside of Rock Tunnel. I'm still not a high enough level, so I use Thunderbolt to zap some wild Zubats. This is the one instance in all of Pokemon where these things are actually useful to fight. After not too long, Coughing learns its first level up move. Finally, I have Sludge. Will this be enough against the self-destructing rocks, though? I'm cautiously optimistic. Let's find out. Sludge does so little. Uh, at least it poisons. But after a few turns of damage, Geodude just blows up anyways, and okay, that didn't do very much. Hey, maybe Coughing can just tank all of these explosions. The second one blows up too, and it takes me down to 29 hit points. Okay, I was uh, probably too optimistic here. I probably won't survive Graveler's self-destruct now. It blows up, and Coughing hangs on at two hit points. Well done, we did it. Finally, after nearly an hour, I've made it to the mid game. Now it's time for me to explain a grand plan that I have for coughing. To set it in motion, I really want to grab the nugget in the tunnel collecting Lavender Town to Celadon. I heal in the Pokemon Center, setting my waypoint here, grab a PP up, and then do some shopping and some selling. At the end of all this, I usually buy vitamins, but today I don't. I need to save up. Next, I grab Fly and make my way back to Pokemon Tower. I'm really hoping that this fight isn't going to be as bad as the last two rival encounters. It isn't, so oh, finally all is right with the world. Maybe coughing is going to gain some momentum now. It really deserves it. And then, as I'm used to in this video, the first Chandler in the tower gets really bad. Coughing gets paralyzed and confused. It hits itself twice before finally knocking out the first Ghastly. But there are two on her team. The second one re-establishes confusion. Coughing damages itself again. Nightshade does a lot, but Thunderbolt hits. Okay, I need one more. Ghastly uses Lick, Coughing survives, please don't hit yourself. It doesn't, and Ghastly goes down. In here, I continue to grab high-priced items. There is an HP up, which I don't use on Coughing, and then a Nugget on the next floor. Luckily for me, the last two Chandlers are easier because they only have a single team member each. Next, Coughing gets to prove to its big brother that it's actually the better Pokemon. After all, just look at Weezing's face. This thing looks like it's in so much pain. I feel so bad for it. I sell items, go to the Safari Zone, collect as many items as possible, use HM3 on Squirtle to teach it Surf, dig back to Celadon, deposit 6 key items, and then head to the Rocket Hideout. Coughing feels really at home here, plus I can grab a lot of stuff that I'm going to sell. Also a PP Up, the most important item, and a rare candy. 
I have a feeling that collecting this extra one is going to be really good because coughing has not been having a good time so far. The obvious choice now is to face Erica because coughing has a type advantage here. Because the training is going to be fast in here with Sludge, I train against all of the trainers and then coughing learns Smokescreen at level 37. Now, I should address my fourth rule for these challenges, which is no TM32 until level 100. I think every Pokemon that learns double team can actually beat the game before level 100, so yeah, I don't think it's actually ever going to get used. The reason I banned the TM for double team specifically is because all the Pokemon that learn it through level up I think should have access to it. It's a move that badge boosts, and it's also sometimes part of the flavor of the Pokemon's learn set. However, if I allowed the TM for double team, then these playthroughs would become entirely centered around getting double team in the department store and then using it for every challenging fight for the rest of the run. It gives Pokemon that otherwise wouldn't have access to the badge boost glitch access to it, and I just don't think that that's fair for every Pokemon. Now, Smokescreen and Sand Attack are very different from Double Team because they only blind the opponent's current Pokemon, and they don't trigger the badge boost. So unfortunately, again, for coughing, this isn't an incredible move. But I'll take it, and I have plans for it. I think that it's really going to come through for us in the end. Erica is obviously easy. There's nothing that she can do to threaten coughing. Next is Sylph, but before that I sell some items, so I have the maximum available space to collect expensive treasure while I stomp all the criminals in here. It feels thematic to be this obsessed with money while using a coughing. I defeat all the rockets, and at the end of all of this, coughing is level 43. Now, can it defeat the rival? Sandslash comes out first. Oh, oh yeah, so this is bad. I guess the best thing to do now is smokescreen. See, I knew it would be useful. And then I'm going to have to slowly whittle this ground type down. This takes a bit of time, but coughing manages it without too many issues. Ninetales is next. Because of sand attack, coughing is missing a lot now, and it takes a lot of damage before it knocks its opponent out. Cloister's next. It does basically nothing. It just goes down to two thunderbolts. Cadaver's next. And, uh, okay. Oh no, it's faster. This playthrough is so punishing. Okay, it's time for more training. Let's think about an intelligent location to do this. Koga's gym has some mandatory trainers, so I'll head there next. Maybe I can defeat Koga? In Generation 1, Bug type is weak to poison, so Sludge will do neutral damage. It does exactly half to the first Venonat, Koga uses an X attack, and the bug falls. But now, since the next Venonat is a higher level, Coughing can't knock it out in two turns. It tanks a Psybeam pretty well, but the following Psychic does so much. Even with a crit on the third Venonat, Coughing faints. I tried again, but honestly, I have no idea what I was hoping for. Like, I'm probably just tired at this point in the playthrough. <sighs> so yeah, the same thing happens and Coughing doesn't even make it to the Venomoth again. I need to slow down, put the time in, and train Coughing up. I finish off the trainers in Koga's gym. After that, I complete the dojo, head to Cycling Road, and I even find a few trainers left in Sylph to defeat. While I'm here, I should probably give the rival another try. I am five levels higher after all. This time, I get way less lucky against Sandslash, and Ninetales takes Coughing out. So I think I should probably set up Smokescreen a bunch first instead. Yeah, I'll try that. This way, Coughing can get to Ninetales without losing too much health. Well, uh, that's the theory. In practice, Sandslash does a lot of damage. Ah, this playthrough. Oh my, I can't believe how bad coughing is doing. But I'm a higher level, so maybe Koga will be possible now. I get exceptional luck in this fight. He has a 25% chance to use an X attack on his team members, and the first two Venonets both get it, dealing no damage to coughing. The third one hits coughing with Psychic for a third, and then Venomoth is next. Coughing has nowhere near the speed it needs to move first. The Psychic type Moth uses, well, Psychic, and it crits, knocking coughing out. Well, that was perhaps the best start to the fight that I could have hoped for, and it still ended up like this. On Route 15, guess what? I <laughs> do more training. The rival's stopping me with Kadabra, and Koga is stopping me with Venomoth. If I made it past the rival, then I'd have to fight Koga anyways, because I can't get to Blaine before I defeat him. It's also interesting that Sabrina is just around. Like, there are so many powerful Pokemon with psychic moves in this section of the game. It makes getting past here very challenging for a poison type. I considered using my rare candies here because of just how badly this is going. But I don't know if that's a good idea. I think I want to save them for later on. I'm probably going to need to be quite a high level to get through the league. After all, all this training and item rating has a benefit. Now, I've earned the right 
to sit in the game corner for what feels like forever and buy 50 coins at a time. Uh, did you know, in Generation 1, it is not possible to buy coins in increments of 500. You have to buy them 50 at a time. This is why whenever someone is like, hey, why don't you use Hyperbeam or why don't you just grab Substitute? I'm like, yeah, no. It takes like five minutes just to do this. And I always feel that pressure of the real-time clock. I'm always trying to get the best performance with every Pokemon. Like, I really care about doing as well as I can with each one of these critters. And sitting here doing this just doesn't feel like a good idea most times. But today, I need to do it. I spend the 152,000 Poke Dollars on 770 coins, and then I buy the TM for Substitute. This was my grand plan for coughing. I'm really hoping that this overpowered move is going to make the rest of the game feel a little bit easier for this cute poisonous puff. I try it first against Koga. Luckily, my substitute is surviving a single hit from the first Venonat Psychic. That's really good. That means I only have to take one quarter damage to knock it out. Plus, my special can't be lowered. Koga uses an X attack, so I proceed without losing my substitute, and I think that this is going to let me do it. And then, Koga's third Venonat breaks my substitute in a single hit. Okay, uh, that's just great. Without being able to get another one, Venomoth is going to take Coughing out. Or it just uses Leech Life. Like, yeah, that is a super effective move. Coughing survives, hits Sludge, does half, Venomoth uses Leech Life again, and I get one more Sludge. But Venomoth survives! Come on! And Coughing faints. <sighs> I tried again, but this time I realized that I just need Coughing's substitute to survive a hit from the third Venonat. I'll need a little bit more health and defense for that to happen. At this point, I'm training east of Vermilion City. Ah, uh, yeah, this is how you know that things are bad, if you're over here in this area. <laughs> so here's a question about some nostalgia. As a kid, did any of you have Coughing, Ekans, or Grimer on your teams? My bet is that if you did, you're in the minority. I certainly never considered adding any of these to my team because they just felt so bad. Especially because I was using a Pokemon like Butterfree, so Psychic moves were super effective against them. Obviously, I'm wiser now though, and I can recognize the perfection that is Coughing's beautiful design. I come back two levels higher and try Koga again. By this point, I was very tired. I'm almost two hours in, and I've already got 24 resets, and Coughing hasn't even defeated Koga. Like, I have four badges! I just randomly decide that spamming Smokescreen might be a good idea against the first Venonat. What am I thinking? When I finally decide to get my substitute up, my special has been lowered once, and that means that the first Venonat can break my substitute with a single Psychic. <sighs> I felt so defeated here that I just spammed Sludge and knocked the Venonat out. I outspeed the second one, but it survives and takes Coughing into the red with Psybeam. I actually always play until the Pokemon faints, just so the footage looks really good, by the way. He refuses my offer, though, and I uh, use his X attack on the third one. Okay, Venomoth, knock me out, but then it uses Leech Life. Coughing survives the terrible bug type attack, Sludge does more than half, and Koga uses an X defend. I can't believe it. <laughs> I just won. I don't think that I could have played that fight any worse. Well, uh, with how painful things have been, I'll take that. Let's move on. Back to Sylph to face the rival now. I've been expecting that this playthrough would get better at some point. Uh, usually most Pokemon make it through a tough section of the game, and then they have a stretch of relative ease following that. But coughing... <laughs> has just been walled at like every single section of the game. The only trainer that I beat with ease was Erica. However, I should be fine against the rival now because I have Substitute. It's going to ensure that Coughing can survive the Kadabra. And in the end, it doesn't even matter because at level 56, I move first and knock it out. So I did it. I take the Jolteon down and finally I can finish the Rocket plotline. Uh, well, sort of. Giovanni is actually a ground type trainer, and the fight against him is quite strange, despite the fact he has no ground type moves. The Rhyhorn comes out, and then I'm just like, oh yeah, I have nothing that's good against this thing. Because of that, I'm going into the fight against Nidoqueen with not very much health. Okay, at least Substitute's set up. The only move I have is Sludge here, and Nidoqueen resists it. At least Giovanni is really bad. So this is just a slow fight, and I do end up winning on my first attempt. I pick up Mimic next, travel through the mansion, and then I face Blaine. I think Coughing has a better shot here than it would against Sabrina's Abra. That thing is actually still faster, it has just over 100 speed. I also want the special boost from the Volcano Badge so that I can survive Psychic types a little bit better. Okay, let's get into this Blaine fight. Ninetales is an easy knockout, Sludge does more than half to Rapidash, Fire Spin breaks my substitute. 
I go a bit too fast here, and I miss setting up again, but at least Rapidash goes down. Next is Blaine's ace, Arcanine. It sets up Reflect, and Coughing sets up Substitute. Flamethrower breaks my sub right away, and Sludge does... Oh no. That's not good at all. So little damage. Arcanine follows its first Reflect up with its signature second Reflect. Sludge chips away, Fire Blast misses, Sludge chips away again, Fire Blast misses again. I use Thunderbolt for special damage, like maybe it's better. And uh, Arcanine goes down to red health, but Blaine just wants to tease me with this victory. And Arcanine hits a takedown. But Coughing is buff, and it survives and knocks Arcanine out. Yes, I won. That was so ridiculous. I can't believe those two Fire Blasts missed. Anyways, there's a lucky fight, a lucky win. I'm taking it. I'm moving on. Sabrina's next. Abra moves first. Still, Coughing has its accuracy lowered with Flash, but that's only going to happen once, because they set up Substitute preventing the future Flashes. Unfortunately, I can't use this safety to boost my stats, so I knock Abra out. Both Kadabra and Coughing miss. Psychic breaks my Substitute, and then Sludge finishes the Psychic type off. So I'm going up against Alakazam with no protection. And uh, it uses Psychic, and that's it. Unless Coughing is a complete boss and survives with two hit points. Unfortunately, though, I fail my smokescreen. But Sabrina uses an X Defend. Coughing misses another sludge? Like, come on! Alakazam uses Reflect, improving its defense even more. And then Coughing finally hits a sludge. This critical hit. I cannot believe it. So Coughing beat both Blaine and Sabrina on its first attempt. But... To be fair, it had to get so lucky to do that. When I thought about both of them going into this playthrough, I wasn't that worried about them. I actually thought coughing would be faster at this point in the playthrough, so maybe it would outspeed the Abra. The trainer that I was worried about was Giovanni. After all, in yellow, he's very good. I make a tough call here, and I teach coughing Mimic in the place of Thunderbolt. I know that this is going to have consequences, but I think that I have to do it. Doug Trio is first. He uses Fissure, misses, and I mimic Earthquake. I get so lucky here. Fissure misses again, and Giovanni uses a guard spec. Next is Persian. I take it out over two turns. Nidoqueen survives Earthquake, breaks my sub, and Nidoking finishes coughing off. And then Giovanni demonstrates why I was worried about him in the first place. Fissure KOs coughing, Earthquake crits, Earthquake crits again... That's four losses so far. I have saved up all my rare candies, and now is probably the time. I'm so close to the league anyways. Plus, I've defeated so many of the NPCs in the game, I don't really want to be training anyways. I use the rare candies, and now can coughing defeat the final gym leader at level 70. Funnily enough, I still don't move first. Dugtrio luckily misses Fissure, giving coughing a free mimic on Earthquake. I need this after all to be able to knock the Nidos out. After that, I finish the ground type off because it's going to be easier to set up Substitute on Persian. Now, I can use Earthquake to one-hit Nidoqueen and Nidoking. Right on his last. Earthquake does more than half, Giovanni uses a guard spec, and Coughing did it. It has been an extremely rough time. Perhaps the roughest of any playthrough that I've done so far. But finally, Coughing is off to the league. My rare candies are gone, and I just hope that I've got what I need to make it through all of them. Luckily for me, the pre-league rival fight has a nice little gift for coughing, and this comes in the form of Jolteon knowing agility and pin missile. Because he has good AI, he's going to alternate between these two underwhelming moves, and that gives coughing an easy win. Giving up Thunderbolt was a choice that I made to be able to defeat Giovanni and retain Sludge, Smokescreen, and Substitute. I think that I'm going to need these three to win. However, I know that this choice is going to have the consequence of making Lorelei more challenging. Sludge does half to Dugong, it uses Rest, and I Mimic Rest. I think that this fight might be slow, so I want to be prepared. After that, I set up Substitute, and since Dugong's spamming Rest, I heal myself as well. And then I move on to Cloister. Surprisingly, Sludge does a third damage to the shell with 180 base defense. I guess Coughing is overleveled. I'm just not expecting very much from it anymore. However, Slowbro is the scariest Pokemon on her team. It has Amnesia and Psychic, a potent combo. So the obvious answer is Smokescreen. If it's boosting its special, I'm going to need it to miss hits, and I want to have a substitute in place. Eventually it breaks mine, but I get it back and knock it out. Jinx is next. Sludge is a one-hit. The Lapras that follows survives with more than half, 
breaks my substitute, Sludge takes it into red, and then Lorelai uses a super potion. So, coughing did it on the first attempt. Now, coughing has had a tough road, and trainers that have rock and ground Pokemon tend to be pretty good against this cute poison type. Uh, well, they should be at least, right? <laughs> Agatha's next. I don't really want to use a quarter effective sludge to knock out all of her ghosts, so after getting my substitute, I do the biggest brain sequence ever. Uh, check this out. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, okay, only five. Yes, smokescreen does not in fact work if the enemy has a substitute. <laughs> ah, what was I doing? I was probably looking at my other monitor or something. I mimic Gengar's lick and start my snail's pace assault on her poison types. This is slow, but coughing is doing a great job. Arbok paralyzes me, which is annoying, and I don't have enough for another substitute at the final Gengar. When it breaks my sub, I thought that I might get lucky, but I don't. The experience in this fight gives me an idea. If I make it back to the final Gengar with a decent amount of health, I can use Smokescreen to reduce its accuracy, and then I'll have time to knock it out without getting hit by Psychic or Hypnosis. Unfortunately, I get confused, and that causes me to switch away from the Smokescreen strategy. I try for the knockout, but Gengar finishes coughing. This time, I'll just keep using Smokescreen. Uh, unless Gengar puts coughing to sleep right away. <laughs> it wears off, and I start my Smokescreen setup. After three, I'm feeling pretty confident, and I go for the knockout. I'll need at least three licks to do this, Okay, looks like I'm going to need four. I get them, and Agatha's defeated. Gyarados is Lance's lead. I took a brief moment to think exactly what might be the best approach here. This thing has Hyper Beam and Hydro Pump, moves that are already quite inaccurate, so Smokescreen is just going to make those moves even worse. I set up twice, use Substitute, Hyper Beam breaks it. In Generation 1, there's no recharge if you break a Substitute. So I set it up again, Hydro Pump misses, and then I go for Sludge. It does half. Hmm... Maybe I uh, should have just attacked right away. Coughing knocks Gyarados out. Sludge is going to manage the first Dragonair, and then I want to mimic Ice Beam. Ah, uh, I, I guess this time I get Hyper Beam instead. <laughs> that was a really painful misclick. Because of it, I lose the first fight, but Coughing is set up for success here. In the next fight, I successfully click on Ice Beam, and I use it to take Aerodactyl down. But I've lost my substitute in the process. Dragonite is last. I go for Ice Beam. Coughing moves first against a good Pokemon for once, and it slays the dragon. The greatest trainer in Kanto is last. The champion sends out Sandslash. I use Substitute, and then yeah, Earthquake just completely shatters it. With good AI, this thing is only going to use Earthquake. It could get a Gen 1 miss, but uh, that's obviously not a strategy, that's just a dream. So. I guess I need to use Smokescreen here to blind it so that it doesn't hit Coughing with Earthquake. But when it does, it crits and Coughing goes down. Okay, I think I need to use Smokescreen on the first and second turn and then get a substitute up. Mimic Earthquake and then knock the Sand Slash out. This sequence of events is just way too long, but I actually pull it off and move on to Alakazam. It uses Psychic and Coughing Faints. Okay, I need a substitute here or I'm gonna lose. However, just getting past Sand Slash is tricky. I'll probably need rest so that I can heal if I make it past the Sandslash and the Alakazam. Then I can use Sludge against everything that follows. It's going to be slow, obviously, but it will work. With rest, I can now take my time against Sandslash and slowly set up more and more smoke screens, making coughing more and more consistent. Once I've healed and have green health, I can get a substitute in place and move on to the Alakazam. It's moving first, so I need to make it miss. I sacrifice my substitute for a smoke screen, but it doesn't prevent the next attack and coughing goes down. Ah, setting all this up takes a long time, so it's really frustrating to lose. Sandslash knocks me out two more times while I try to set up. I make it back to Alakazam, but I don't have a substitute here. It goes for Psybeam, the less powerful attack. Coughing survives, uses Smokescreen, but Alakazam still gets a Psychic in. This is starting to feel really bad. I know how I have to get past the Alakazam, but after that I'm not even sure that Coughing can do it. The likelihood of getting there is also very low. As the frustration from this scenario was nearing its peak, coughing knocks itself out with substitute. Yup, that can actually happen if you have exactly a quarter HP left. So I've started using Toxic now because it deals damage while I heal with rest. It's actually faster and better than Sludge offensively. These fights are all really slow and I was looking at the clock a lot and thinking this actually might be my longest playthrough yet. Even if I make it to Alkazam, I can't defeat it. 
but this time it uses Kinesis, which fails because of Substitute. Smokescreen hits, Alakazam's Psychic breaks my Substitute, and Coughing gets in a second Smokescreen. Alakazam once again uses Kinesis, and it fails. That gives Coughing another Substitute and three more Smokescreens. Okay, please Toxic, please knock the Alakazam out. I just need to use Rest and Heal. As the powerful Psychic type continues to miss, I realize that I don't have very many uses of Substitute left. While I might get by it, the rest of the fight is going to be much harder. I have to buy time somehow by spamming a move that isn't going to do anything at this point, so I waste time with Smokescreen. Alakazam faints for the first time. Executor is next. I poison it, and then use Smokescreen as it falls. I'm making different move choices here to try to plan my PP out effectively for the final three Pokemon. After all, I do need at least one Toxic for each of them. Uh, apparently I need two for the Cloister. Cloister breaks my Substitute. I wish I could use Rest to waste time, but I need Protection instead. Ice Beam breaks my Substitute, just as Cloister faints to poison damage, and now I'm going up against Ninetales with no protection. I have to set up first, Ninetales uses Tail Whip, and then I start setting up Smoke Screens. Toxic Poisons, and I buy time with Rest. Come on, come on. And then my heart sinks, but uses a full restore. Toxic has 85% accuracy, and I need my final two uses of it to get knockouts, or I'm gonna have to win with struggle. Honestly, that would sort of bring this entire arc of coughing beating the game to a thematic close though, so maybe it's fitting. Toxic poisons and knocks out Ninetales. But the cost of this process is that all of coughing's power points except one use of toxic and one use of rest are depleted. Jolteon is last. Pin Missile fails to break my substitute, I use Toxic, and I pray. It works. Jolteon breaks my substitute, I waste rest at full health, and then I have no other choice. The struggle begins. Coughing is dealing so much damage, and because of that, Jolteon faints. Here are the results. Coughing got a real-time finish of 2 hours, 37 minutes, and 28 seconds. It did this with a level of 75 and 40 resets, and a game time of 8 hours and 14 minutes. After all of this, it was so refreshing when Coughing was able to defeat Mewtwo on its first attempt. I do have to say, using this moveset felt so thematic. This Poison Puff just feels like it needs to be played this way. But there are still a lot of questions in my mind, and because I'm a curious person, let's go back and do some optimization to figure out how we can make this playthrough easier for Coughing. I'll start with a champion. Let's see if there's an easier way for Coughing to defeat him. Well, I tried everything at this level, and honestly, Coughing just can't do it. So it led me to the question of what level is required to defeat the champion consistently. And asking this question actually leads me to another more important question, which is, what level does Coughing's substitute need so that Earthquake doesn't one-hit it? I tested this incrementally at each level from level 74 up. At level 80, it's still going down to a single hit, so I jumped to level 90, and still no! Okay, maybe 95? Nope. Sandslash is just outputting too much damage with Earthquake. Level 98? No. Level 99? No. And even level 100 doesn't work. So surviving a single Earthquake just doesn't seem particularly feasible. But maybe it can be possible? Let's get a bit nerdy here. In the center of the screen, you can see my coughing summary stats, and in the bottom left you can see the stats after the initial badge boosts are applied. In Generation 1 and 2, there are actually no effort values or EVs. These were introduced in Generation 3. Instead, a system called Stat Experience is used, and this is how it works. Whenever your Pokémon defeats an enemy Pokémon, the enemy's space stats are added to your stat experience. For example, if I defeat a Mew, then I'm going to get 100 added to each of my stats' stat experience. This accumulates up to a maximum value of 65,535. My coughing, after all the grinding from this playthrough, just has over 50% of its defense stat experience filled in, so that's leaving a lot of stat growth on the table. If I trained coughing on wild Pokemon, then it would gain stat experience in this stat, and eventually it would max it out. I could speed this process up by training exclusively against Pokemon like Graveler and Onix in Victory Road. Instead, to save time here, I'm going to be using a program called Gamehook to max out coughing's stat experience right away to see what its defense stat would have been in this case. By the way, if you change your Pokemon's stats, you actually need to level it up or deposit it and withdraw it from the PC to have the game recalculate its stats with its new stat experience. So to demonstrate this, I take my level 99 coughing, adjust its stat experience in Gamehook, and then use a rare candy on it to recalculate its stats. Previously at level 100, it had 300 defense, and now it has 324, so that's an 8% boost. 
Will this allow coughing substitute to survive a single hit? Just a reminder here that my coughing is a perfect coughing, so if you had a worse coughing, this might not work this way. The answer is yes, it does. I can't believe it. A perfect coughing with max stat experience at level 100 might just have a consistent path to victory against the champion. Now, while we watch the footage of me testing this fight over and over, I'll just say that this is not realistic if you care about time. If you want to nuzlocke the game with a coughing, like, fine, do this. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> that would be like the most painful thing. If you want to beat the game quickly though, which is usually what I'm trying to do, this is an awful idea. While I was testing this with Substitute, I realized that I can actually just sweep his team with Sludge now, because my coughing is so buff. Alright, that was fun, but I actually need to figure out how to get by the champion in a realistic amount of real time so I don't get stuck here again. At level 74 with my previous Toxic Smokescreen Substitute Rest strategy, how many times can I defeat the champion out of 10? Uh, the answer? Zero! <laughs> I made some mistakes during these fights, but even without the mistakes, I don't think that my win-loss ratio would have inspired confidence. Yeah, the second playthrough is probably going to be brutal again. I realized that I forgot to wear candy during these tests because my level's one lower than it was in the actual playthrough. During this, I retained Sludge instead of Toxic. There's actually a benefit to doing this. Now I have more PP, plus Sludge is enough to deal with Alakazam. It doesn't solve the problem that is Sandslash and Alakazam. I'm going to have to use Smokescreen for that. But I think that using Sludge here is going to be better than Toxic. So the moveset to shoot for here is Sludge, Smokescreen, Substitute, and Rest. Moving backwards through the challenging trainers, what about Agatha? I realized something in the very first fight against her, Mimicking Lick is superfluous. I can knock out all of her Pokemon with plenty power points remaining on Sludge. That means that I can bring Rest into this fight, and that really stabilizes things by giving Coughing more than 3 substitutes to work with. Giovanni needs to be tested next. I'm going to use 10 rare candies before him, I do think that that's the right choice. At this level, unfortunately, there's no counter to Fissure. With 133 speed, there's just no way that I'm going to be able to outspeed the Dugtrio. But if Fissure misses, I can make it past Dugtrio and then Coughing can sweep the rest of Giovanni's team. And now for the section that caused Coughing the most problems, Koga and the Sylph rival. Also, perhaps Blaine and Sabrina? Like, yeah, I should, I should definitely test them. <laughs> I got very lucky there. Sabrina is basically a 50-50 gamble. If Abra hits Flash first turn, I'm probably going to lose. If it gets X Defend or misses, I proceed. Kadabra can ruin my substitute, which lowers my chances against the following Alakazam because I move second. But her ace is truly random. It could just spam Recover and Reflect all day, but it could also hit with Psychic and Psy Wave and get like 1 damage or get like 70 damage. I tested this fight 10 times, and out of them I won 5 times. I'm not using any stall tactics here, and I do think that this is good enough. I'll get lucky and only incur like maybe 2 or 3 resets in the worst case scenario. I test Blaine next, I realize that I can fight the trainers in his gym for a couple more levels, but even at level 60 he just stomps me again and again and again. Since Giovanni is quite literally only 2 trainers away, I think that I can actually use my rare candies now. Thinking about it, I can actually use them before Sabrina, so that it will even out these 2 fights significantly while not sacrificing levels or time. Ok, time for Koga. It seems that at level 56, the level I was at previously is a good choice. This makes my substitute survive hits from the first three Venonats. Venomoth is either going to use Psychic or Leech Life. Since Sludge is dealing half, that means Koga's only going to get one turn to choose Psychic. If he uses X Attack or Leech Life instead, then Coughing wins. I'll take these odds, I don't want to train up higher than 56 for this fight. This is also a good level for the rival at Sylph. You'll notice that I'm not doing rigorous tests against each of these trainers. The reason is, if I have to train to a higher level, I'm just going to compromise my real time way too much. So if I can get through at this level, I'm going to go for it. There are 4, 5, or 6 other problematic fights here. Actually it just feels like every fight in this run was problematic in some way, except Erica. Coughing felt really bad. Like not as tedious as Abra and not as fragile as Zubat, but still awful. Coughing, you're cute, I love you, don't worry, but uh, yeah, you're really bad at a playthrough of this game. So, the other 4, 5, or 6 problematic trainers are Brock, Rival 2, Misty, Rival 3, Surge, and the self-destructing Hiker. And I have a solution for all of these. Here's how I manage it in my second playthrough. I name this Coughing S for speed, actually I mean stinky. This thing is definitely not going fast. I grind, defeat the optional rival, continue grinding all the way up to level 19 for Brock. The key here is that I want to overlevel Coughing. 19 gives consistency for Brock. In combination with more training, this gives me a higher level on Nugget Bridge and allows me to smash the rival here. On my way to Vermilion City, I fight some optional trainers as well, like uh, this Butterfree boy. 
Last time one issue against Misty was that coughing couldn't two hit the star you, so I'm going to ensure that I'm a high enough level to do that. On the SSN, I continue training on random NPCs to level up coughing as much as possible. I defeat the rival and head past Diglett's cave to defeat a few more trainers in this area instead of backtracking here later in the game. That brings coughing to level 30 for Misty. Now I can two hit the star you. It also gives coughing more bulk to survive the following star me. After knocking it out, coughing levels up. I was hoping that after Surge, coughing would level up to 32 and learn Sludge, but unfortunately it doesn't. So I backtrack a bit and train until I learn it. Sludge really helps against trainers like the Wrapping Lass and the Slow Pokemaniac. Also, being a high level is going to help against the self-destructing hiker. I find it really ironic here that Coughing, a Pokemon known for its self-destructing abilities, is surviving this hiker's self-destructs just by tanking them all. At level 34, even if Coughing gets hit by a few other moves, I can survive all of his team and move on. So now it's time to level up, earn money, and spend the time required for Substitute. While this takes a lot of time, and it seems like Coughing is overleveling, it really isn't. I reflected on this while I was doing this second playthrough, and I really do need level 74 or 75 to survive two hits from the champion's sand slash. During the training, I actually lost one of the hypno trainers in Sylph, which is pretty annoying. And then Koga is frustrating too. The third Venonat gets a critical hit and takes my substitute out, leaving coughing exposed for Venomoth. Alright, one reset here isn't the worst. I do manage to defeat him on my next attempt. My plan from here works against Blaine. I use all my rare candies, leveling Coughing up to level 70, and then I sweep his team. Sabrina's next, and at this level I can finally move first against the Abra and set up Substitute. I am speed tied with Kadabra, this time I move first and knock it out. I can survive a single hit from Alkazam, Sabrina uses X Defend, Sludge does a lot, Alkazam uses Psychic, breaking my Substitute, and then I finish it off. Giovanni is last. Doug Trio uses Fissure just great. When it doesn't use Fissure, I mimic Earthquake, and from there I knock the Dugtrio out, get a substitute set up on Persian, and sweep. The final rival's easy, Lorelei's easy, the hiker is the hiker, and Agatha's final Gengar puts Coughing to sleep. Dream Eater does a lot, Coughing fails to wake up, and the ghost feasts on my dreams. The next fight is actually worse. While status conditions like confusion, paralysis, and sleep are a frustration here, the real issue is that Agatha can heal her Pokemon, and the only damage dealing move I have access to is Sludge. This fight stretches on so long, wastes so much time, and I end up running out of PP. Struggle can't hit ghosts, so this fight's over. I defeat her on my next attempt though. This time I don't misclick against Lance, and I finish him off on my first try. I've made it back to the champion, at the same level that I was before. I have Sludge this time, and it's going to make it a bit easier to time when I knock Pokemon out, instead of them fainting when my substitute's down. So let's recap the losses. Ice Beam, a crit from Earthquake. Earthquake when my substitute's down. A crit from Earthquake. Alakazam Psychic. Earthquake. Ice Beam freezes. Just great. Earthquake crits. And uh, Earthquake when my substitute's down. Finally, on the 10th fight, Coughing does it. 2 hours, 13 minutes, and 35 seconds. At level 76 with 14 resets and a game time of 7 hours and 42 minutes. I was able to improve real time, resets, and game time. I finished at a higher level, but I'm not really sure that that's a downside. While I did improve most of these metrics, I found this finish quite disappointing. I thought that I would shave more time off of the playthrough. I considered going back and trying a few other strategies against the champion, like what about Bide, Fire Blast, Haze, maybe Thunder, but I don't really see how any of them would make it easier. Maybe a special move would take the Sand Slash out faster, but if I knock it out right away, then I'll just arrive at Alakazam with no substitute, and then the problem repeats. At the end of all of these ideas, I come back to the fact that Coughing is just going to need Smokescreen and Luck to win. The other way forward is having Substitute survive an Earthquake, and that's a big sacrifice of real time as a result. It's finally time for the tier list, and honestly, Coughing did not get very good results. All the Pokemon I'm going to compare it to have done one playthrough with to date, so I'm comparing Coughing's first playthrough results with their first playthrough. I am going to do replays with all the Pokemon that I've only played once, and after that I'll re-rank them all in the tier list so that the results are accurate. Coughing was only actually two and a half minutes faster than Zubat. It got slower times than Pikachu and Magnemite. Normally there's some ambiguity between Pokemon with this close of results, but today it really seems clear. Coughing deserves a spot just ahead of Zubat in the F tier. I still really like this floating stink ball though, so yeah, Coughing, I love you. Like, subscribe, bring the Chimeco, and comment because I gotta read them all. Thanks so much to all my patrons. Your support enables me to continue making this content, which is my dream after all. Thanks for making it a reality. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. Now, it's bloopers time. I'm really excited to give this cuting... F cuting? What am I saying? Oh dear. But there is a super line... Super lining here. Exactly. But there is a super line...
Oh, I just said it again. Super lining. It's not super lining. Silver lining. Coughing takes just under half by bubble beam. Stormy crits. Oh my gosh, what is this sentence? This is not what I wrote. Sometimes you're just like reading the sentence and then your brain's like, actually, none of these words are in any of these places. They should just all kind of like <laughs> switch around. Uh, coughing's doing a... Coughing. It's like, that was like, I almost coughed there actually. My voice like gave out. Coughing uses tackle. Tackle. Yeah, that's exactly what coughing does. No. I try for smog to poison Raichu. 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 I'm so... Raichu. Pikachu. Raichu. I want to say it like that. Let me say it like that. <laughs> Pika blue. Raichu. Pikachu. Raichu. And then there's like Pichu and it's like... Oh, why did you call it Pichu? Pichu. I try smog to poison Raichu. Oh, I said Raichu. Oh, come on. <laughs> I try smog to poison Raichu. Oh, the Raichu. The third one hits coughing with Psychic for a third, and then Venomoth is next. Koging. Koging. What am I saying? Koging? I should have named my coughing Koging. That's like the best name for it. Not stinky. Koging. I just randomly decide that spamming spokes... Sp spammy spokes ring. Blah, 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 blah. I think that Koga has a better shot here. Uh, again... I think Koga has... Koga. I should have just nicknamed my coughing Koga. The next coughing playthrough I do, it's ca it's being called Koga. And then Koging. Koging as well. Those are the best coughing names. I think Stinky is a pretty good name, actually. I stand by my choice to name coughing Stinky. And Koging. And Koging did it. I said it again. Koga felt really bad. Not as tedious as with Ab... Earthquake does more than half. Giovanni uses his typical guard spec. And with that, Koga did it. Koga! Nah, I keep saying it! Koging, coughing. Oh my gosh. After all the struggles that coughing and I went through, there is still one more remaining. Professor Oak. His Tauros, Executor, and Arcanine aren't issues. Toxic in combination with Substitute, Smokescreen, and Rest are enough to proceed reliably to Charizard. But it's the issue. Flamethrower can destroy Coughing's Substitute in a single hit, and Firespin can break it and then continue to do damage. I make it to Gyarados on my first attempt, but Hydro Pump does way too much damage, and I'm forced to either heal or try Substitute. Both of these won't work, so that's a reset. I'm going to need to make it to Oak's Ace with a Substitute already in place. But that's really hard because Charizard takes Coughing's Substitute out with Firespin, the attack continues, and that causes a second loss. So what does it take? Well, on my third fight, Charizard uses Rage, <laughs> and that gives Coughing all the time it needs to get into a strong position for when Gyarados hits the field. This way, I'm able to set up some smoke screens, get my substitute back, heal with rest, and then poison Oak's ace. It's been a slow playthrough, and so it's fitting that Coughing defeats Oak with toxic stall tactics. <laughs>